We have had the luxury for many years of preaching witty sermons, spinning ideologies and doctrines to people that were not really scriptural. Now God is giving us a new profession of faith, and that's what we are. We are people of faith. How many of you are a person of faith? You know what? We have the faith that overcomes the world. I'm going to say it again. We have the faith that overcomes the world. Now, if you are a Christian, you can no longer live as if the supernatural was not real. And you pastors that criticize the healing power of God in the modern day are being foolish because you are saying that the devil is able to operate. Imagine this, a cessationist is saying, in the last days, Satan can do miracles, but God's people cannot. Well, that's a lie from the pit of hell because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody said amen. In verse 10, it says, they all gave heed to him. Politicians are going to give heed to devils. Leaders are going to give heed. Movie stars are going to give heed to devils. Meetings like this, someone said, I don't understand it. You brought a tent to L.A. You had only 45 days to put a meeting together. And all the crowd showed up. And there was no big screen skinny jeans and fog machine dependency. One out of three ain't bad. But I'm going to tell you, I believe that Americans are sick of the toothless sermons that they're hearing in the dead churches. I believe Americans are tired of being told to feel better about myself. I don't want you to feel better about yourself. I want you to be set free. I wish that I could have five minutes with Oprah Winfrey. I know she wouldn't do it, but I'm going to say in love, I wish I could. Matter of fact, I would speak at the church of Oprah. And here's what I would say. The emotional needs of the American public have run off the map of the natural. People are no longer experiencing natural problem. They are now experiencing supernatural problem. And that's why our meetings are filled. That's why people are coming. Because they're saying, Mario, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I don't need another uh, witty sermon. I don't need chicken soup for the soul. I need a miracle. I need something that isn't going to just give me a groovy feeling. I need something that can break chains. I need something that takes away cancer. I need something that changes my mind. I need something that when I've walked up there, the power of evil is off my life forever. Glory to God. Give God the glory. Back in the year 19, none of your business, I was preaching at the university in San Jose, San Jose State University, in a a large hall. Several hundred students packed it out to hear the crazy evangelist from Berkeley. And when I walked out, there was some jeering going on in the back. And I thought to myself, I am never going to calm this crowd down. In the middle of my sermon on the right-hand side aisle, a young man with a military haircut entered the building screaming as if he were on fire. His screaming was so devastating, 
heartrending, terrifying, that you, no one in the room was unaffected. His very presence in that university hall changed the atmosphere. I felt the temperature drop. I felt a stench enter the room. Here's a young man screaming in an agony that you cannot find a nameless agony. He runs to the front. He falls in front of me. He's writhing like a snake and frothing at the mouth. You're saying, preacher, you're lying. There were almost a thousand university students that saw this with their own eyes. I looked at him and wanted to run. I bet you thought I was going to say I looked at him and I felt the power of God and I took authority. I was looking at the exit behind me. I'm suddenly in the exorcist. How many of you like to know what happened next? Well, we're bringing the tent back next year, so I'll tell you the... Oh, Jesus said, walk down there, kneel beside him, do not yell, put your, put your voice by his ear and command that spirit to leave him alone. I said, Lord, that's not the way I saw it done. I've seen priests with crosses that would get red hot, they'd scream all night. And that's where the church has got to grow up. We have got to quit playing games with the anointing. No, you got to get louder than that. We have got to quit playing games with the anointing. The reason that I believe there is such an intense emotional act by an evangelist in a meeting is because that intense emotional action did not occur in the prayer room before he came on the stage. The victories that are won over demons and diseases are won in the prayer closet. They're won when God wins over you. If God defeats my flesh, I can defeat the power of the devil. Somebody said amen. Now, the Lord said, go down there, don't yell. I wanted to yell. Don't yell. Kneel. Put your head down by his ear. I went down there. I knelt down beside him. I got next to his ear and I said, you foul devil, leave him alone. And he looked like he had died. He went totally silent. I don't think I could hear his heart beating. He was completely stiff. And I thought now I got from one terror to a new terror. <laughs> and suddenly he began to sob like a baby sobbing. And I told him, I said, my brother, you must receive Jesus now. You must receive Christ right now. And he will give you a new spirit. And he'll heal what this devil has done to you. And so he was saved. And he stood up and told the story of how this thing got on him when he was in, in the war zone. And he came home and he was living in San Jose and every night he would run across the city screaming helplessly. Many times the police stopped him, tried to have him committed. He couldn't get help anywhere. Now the Bible says this, they all gave heed to him from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God. Many of the false religions that are operating right now in Los Angeles claim to be of God. They are not of God. And their spiritual isms are dangerous to you. Now why is a meeting like this important? Why is this important? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Amen. In the book of Romans chapter 15, from Elycrium all the way to Rome, I have preached the gospel. That was the known world. He said, I have fully preached the gospel with mighty 
signs, and wonders. What does the healings that have happened under this tent have to do with the gospel? Everything. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not entertainment. They're not meant for you and I to feel good or close to God. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. 